What's up, Mario from Merch Fab. Uh, today the plan was to be trucking some stuff around, moving some cars, and uh, getting all the rubbish cleared out of the workshop, ready to get cracking with the 100E. But I went to pick some stuff up this morning, got back here and I had smoke coming out the uh, right side front wheel, and the brakes were basically binding on. So um, yeah, I didn't fancy uh, driving around with any loads on it, with it doing that. So uh, yeah, another job on the list now. I'm gonna strip the front brakes apart and see what's going on with that. Right, so there's a few things that can uh, cause these to bind up. Uh, this is a floating caliper, so the pressure is only applied from one side, force pushing in, and then the whole caliper is allowed to slide on two pins, top and bottom. So these have to be greased, and you know, this has to be able to slide back and forth freely so that. The piston can push on one side and it will slide across that way and push this pad onto the brake. So if these are dried up and there's not enough grease in them, it can slide out under pressure and then jam on these pins and it will keep pressure on this one side because the piston will release from this side, free off that back pad and just leave it on this side and you'll probably find like one pad is wearing out more than the other if it's doing it where it's completely freed off now. The other thing that can happen is where the pads actually, these pads need to be able to slide in this carrier. So if the pads are completely jammed up solid in this carrier and they can't slide back and forward to allow them to like clamp and release, then um, they can bind up there and cause it to rub. Another issue that I had with an old transit was that it was actually the flexi hose causing the brake to bind on and lock on. I stripped all the calipers down twice, greased them all, cleaned everything out, and it's still doing it. Um, and an easy way to check if it's that is to just pump the foot brake up, and if it's then locked on, just crack, crack off the bleed nipple, and if the caliper releases, then you know it's obviously further up and it's nothing to do with the caliper. Apparently these lines like break up inside and the way they sort of deteriorate, it becomes almost like a one-way valve for the fluid. And um, that's all it was. I put a new flexi on and it was absolutely fine. So uh, hopefully this just needs stripping down and cleaning out, but we'll have a look. There's another thing to check as well. You want to check that the pistons are actually sliding back freely in the uh, caliper so what I'll do is just now I'll push the pistons in with a G clamp and then pump them in and out a couple of times with a foot pedal just in case there's some dirt or rust around the uh, piston that could be causing it so these are the sliders in here that's pretty dry it's like no grease left on it The bottom one's got grease on it. So that could be it. It could just be that where that top one's not sliding freely, jamming it on. The discs and pads could do with replacing, but I'm not gonna do that now. These have got a few miles in them. You can see how the discs are uh, pretty much shot on the other side. They're worn right in. So you need to make sure these bits here where the uh, Pads slide on are all free from crust. I've got a little trick for those bits actually. I just wire brush any crust off the end of the pad where that's got to slide. Put 
bit of copper grease on the ends of the This is just basically what you would do if you were fitting new pads. But this isn't a how to on doing brakes because if you don't know how to do brakes or you're not comfortable taking your car parts apart, the last piece you want to be messing with is your brakes because obviously you could kill someone or kill yourself. So uh, that's my little disclaimer. Make sure you don't get any copper grease on the actual uh, brake pad surface. Alright, so let's just check, check that these slide back in. But they both go back super easy, you can pretty much push them in with your fingers, look. So that ain't going to be the issue there. So all we got to do now is base clean all this old dried up grease off of the sliders and re-grease those. If these have actually uh, gone rusty, you want to clean them off with some emery or a wire wheel or something. Now just using some multi-purpose grease on these. There's a little uh, dust seal in the back that you need to clip over the uh, back of the caliper to stop any water and stuff getting onto that. Uh, it can be quite difficult to get them in. One in. Then uh, I always lock tight everything on brakes because obviously if the bolts fall out you're going to be in the shite. Right, so I've done what I can to that. Gonna do the other side now. The other side wasn't binding, but you know, you wanna work in pairs when you're doing stuff like this, so. Done, let's take it for a spin. Definitely needed doing on that other side as well. That top pin on the other side was pretty much wedged in there. So let's give that a go. That's loads better. The pedals uh, 
way firmer, um, less travel in it, and um, yeah, the brakes just feel sharper. So yeah, job done. Yeah, it's too late in the day now to drop the uh, floor panel 100E back, but uh, I'm gonna load it on the back of here and then head off first thing tomorrow. Right, this thing's all loaded up. Um, Berlu gave me the shell. Wants this back. He wants to use the engine and some other bits for uh, another one of these he's got. Um, when I was building the truck, someone made a comment about shortening the winch rope to stop it binding up. And that's something I want to do because it's um, where it collects on one side, it's actually pushing on this box and pushing the, the control box up and down. So I'm guessing. You know, I'm guessing it could be wearing into that box underneath. So well, basically what I want to know is if I pull all the cable out, can you just cut it off at the end and then reconnect it to the drum? Or do you have to cut it off at the hook end and then get the uh, get it recrimped somehow? So if anyone knows the answer to that, that would be handy. So yeah, if you've got binding brakes, you can uh, give that a go, but if if you're a complete moron mechanically, then I just recommend that you don't mess around with your own brakes and you just take it to a garage and get it done because uh, there's plenty of horror stories of um, people having a go at it themselves and it going drastically wrong. So yeah, if you don't know what you're doing, best to just leave it. Um, but I thought I might make an interesting little video anyway. So yeah, that's it. So yeah, that's it for this one. Back at it again tomorrow. So cheers for watching and see you tomorrow.